with that, Rhett, I'll let you go ahead and get started and introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Rhett Newby. Uh, I'm the Pratt County uh, Ag and Natural Resources Extension Agent. I uh, just started this last year, and uh, I also have 4-H responsibilities within my county. Uh, I'm going to be honest, when I first got asked to do this presentation, uh, Kelsey, I thought Kelsey told me that I was just supposed to be doing or speaking about Skillathon and Quiz Bowl, which are very closely, rela closely related uh, until about, I think it was Friday, I realized that I'm doing all of it, so I'm now, I've quickly prepared, so... <laughs> Luckily, I've done this for a long time. Um, just a quick history of myself. Uh, I grew up in the Wildcat District where we were very, I was on a very competitive team within 4-H for the four sweepstakes. Uh, I competed in all four contests uh, several, several years and uh, was just competitive as I tried to be competitive anyways. Um, and then after... I graduated, I went and I spent a semester at Eastern Oklahoma State on the livestock judging team and then transferred to Hutchinson Community College where I was on the judging team there and followed that up with uh, just graduating from Kansas State uh, this past year where I was also on the livestock judging team. So I spent a lot of time in the livestock judging arena, uh, but I also have got a lot of information and knowledge about meets judging, skill fun and quiz bowl uh, throughout my 4-H career. Uh, first up, uh, I'm just gonna, I don't know what everyone's wanting to do or even uh, association with 4-H, if you guys are agents or if you guys are uh, volunteers looking to try to start a team. I'm gonna tell you first off um, that if you're not an agent, I would probably tell you that you need to go contact your local unit agent just to see what they've got going already. Um, but if you are a, already an agent, I'm gonna flip it and turn it back to, I'm gonna have you flip it and go to the other way and say, you need to contact your volunteers and see who in the community is willing to help and do this because these programs don't happen without volunteers. Um, I quickly learned that uh, just even in this past year that it's not feasible to take, to do this stuff. Uh, if you're trying to be competitive, it's not feasible to do it with just yourself. You need volunteers, you need parents that are willing to jump in and help you. Um, so with that being said, um, all these are up. Uh, I like to leave uh, potential up to the imagination. Um, here in Pratt County, I, with me being new, I haven't really had a great opportunity to get moving. Um, I kind of used the uh, example with Kelsey that I don't know if we're quite off the floor yet. I think we're standing on our tippy toes and we're ready to go, but we're just not quite ready yet. Uh, just not quite there yet. We're still working on some tweaks and things here and there to get us rolling. Um, and part of it is also the situation of seasons that I kind of rolled in at an odd time to be able to do some things. Um, but so first off, I just want to quickly explain what the sweepstakes entails. Um, Kansas 4-H livestock sweepstakes are four contests and it's it happens within two days. So it's very, uh, very rigorous and it's I can admit that it is very difficult for uh, younger kids, roughly nine to seven or even on older, uh, to be able to do this, to do all contests or even just two or three, uh, just because there's so much going on. It happens so quick. Um, but first off, I'll just kind of list some of the contests. So there is the Skillathon contest, um, which Skillathon is just kind of an all encompassing thing. Um, there is the practicum within the skillathon, which I refer to it most of the time as just ID, uh, because you have uh, you have to identify different breeds of livestock, tools for livestock uh, handling, vaccination, just basically any tool that you can use when you're dealing with livestock, um, and then identify feed stuffs and meat cuts within the livestock uh, realm, um, and then. There's also some, and so that's most of your individual part. There's also a test that goes along with that. And that, again, that's more of just an all encompassing thing. Um, and then there are some quality assurance. Uh, well, I call it the quality assurance portion where maybe you are asked to read a feed, a, uh, yeah, a feed label 
and answer how much protein this has, what age of pig it might be fed to, um, or you might have to read a medicine uh, medicine label and have to answer that uh, how long the uh, withdrawal period is, or who the manufacturer of that fee of that uh, medicine is. There's just all kinds of information that it really takes a lot of years for a kid to be able to learn that, and it can't be taught within one session. But there's just a lot of it. Uh, but that's the majority of what your uh, skill thon is going to entail. There's also a wool and meats judging part, and that's done as a team most of the time here in Kansas. And I'll admit I'm not very knowledgeable on that, but I do, do know that Kansas State University has a lot of uh, resources to be used for those. Um, moving on from the Skillathon, which is a very hard contest to prepare for just because you never know what you're going to get, um, is a contest that is closely related with it in, my, in the way that you can prepare, which is the uh, Quiz Bowl. In Quiz Bowl, uh, there are, uh, it's a hard, another hard one to explain. Uh, I just always tell people, if you want to do Quiz Bowl, you've just got to have all, all kinds of knowledge of livestock. Um, but the way that Kansas uh, does the Quiz Bowl for 4-H sweepstakes is you have to have a four-person team. Uh, it cannot be three people. It has to be four. Um, that team will go take a test and then uh, from those test scores, Kansas, the they will seed the top, uh, I believe it's now 12 teams in the state off of those test scores, and uh, be those teams will be placed into a bracket where then they will uh, compete similar to a basketball tournament. Um, and so within the quiz bowl, once you make it into what we call the buzzer round, or buzzer rounds, um, there are three rounds within those. Uh, so the first round is uh, the individual or the head-to-head -head portion is what we called it. Uh, so the chair one will go up against the chair one of the other team, chair two will go against the chair two of the other team and so forth. Um, and then that will happen two times around. So there are eight questions that are involved with that part and they're all worth 10 points a piece. And then they move to the team portion, which the team portion is the whole team can answer and they bounce back and forth. And if I remember right, there is eight, there might be 10. I've, it's been a few years since I've actually been involved with this quiz bowl. Um, so I'm not as familiar with the newer rules that have been set in place. Um, and then the final round, which I believe is like 15 ish questions. Um, that are toss up questions. So speed of the buzzer really makes a difference there. Those questions are all worth 15 points, but you can get a 10, but if you uh, answer incorrectly, it is a 10 point deduction. So that part of the contest is very diff is can play a big role in who's gonna end up winning. Um, so that's your quiz bowl contest. Um, again, that one is a lot of just general livestock knowledge. Uh, that it is very hard to teach, but you just kind of have to be able to do it. And I'll go through some things here in a little bit about how we can maybe help prepare kids. Uh, the other two contests, so there's also livestock judging, which I'm sure a lot of people would know what that is uh, for animals in, the, uh, in a pen or in a rack and you rank them one through four. And then uh, we have nine classes at the state sweepstakes and you give four sets of reasons. So the four sets of discussion why you place them that way. And then the final contest is the meat judging contest. Uh, my camera's getting really dark on me. Um, the final contest is the meat judging contest where, let's see, um, we have six classes of placing uh, for meats, uh, uh, for meat cuts. And then you have 30 identification cuts, uh, 30 retail ID cuts that you have to identify. And I've always been told, and I was taught by my meats judging coach when I was young, that that will sort the contest every time. Um, that identification plays such a huge role in how well you do. So you've got to work on that one the most. Um, and then the final portion would be questions for the juniors and reasons for the seniors. And the seniors, I believe, get three sets of reasons. 
and juniors get uh, have two sets of questions, if I remember right. So those are your, that's just a quick uh, rundown of the four contests that are available at the livestock sweepstakes. Um, another thing with the sweepstakes is even if you do one contest, you don't have to do all four, um, but you can do all four, but that's not a requirement. Um, you can do, there is individual sweepstakes awards. So if individuals compete in the livestock judging, the meats judging, and the skillathon, they are uh, up for a sweepstakes individual award. But for a local unit, so a district or a um, county to win the, or to be co competitive within the whole sweepstakes as a team, they have to be in all four events. Um, so first off, I'm just gonna maybe talk about how we can prepare for uh, skillathon slash quiz bowl because I I tend to run those two together. That's kind of how I was taught, and a lot of the information is uh, ends up being the same in the end. Um, and if you're trying to plan a ton of practices, it works out really well to get two practices done in one night, especially when there's so much overlap. <laughs> um, so for, I like to say, I leave things up to the imagination. Um, the thing we're I'm dealing with, right, or that I know a lot of other people are dealing with is just the competitiveness of trying to get kids involved, uh, youth involved, trying to get people to wanna join in and do this and be competitive. Uh, and do it at a high level, but also just to participate. Um, so one of the things that uh, one of my coaches did when I was young was, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, one of the things that one of my coaches did when I was young was she actually took uh, the game Trivial, Pur Trivial Pursuit and uh, revamped it to make it into a livestock knowledge uh, game. So we had questions within Trivial Pursuit that were all oriented towards our livestock. And she even broke it into different categories of maybe species. And um, yeah, I think she had just broken it into species, um, which made it incredibly fun because you'd maybe get two people on your team and one person's a pig person and the other person's a cattle person. And neither one of them are a sheep person and they've got to figure out a sheep, they've got to figure out how to answer a sheep question. Um, and that's kind of a, one of the fun ways to keep them involved and get them to learn, um, while also having fun and they don't realize that they're learning when they do these kinds of activities. Um, other things that we would do sometimes is we, um, uh, would have what we, we would have an, a hands-on activity within the practice. So at one point, maybe, uh, we'd go, uh, our coach would go to the meat locker and try to get a maybe a full ruminant stomach from the meat locker so that way we can bring it home, put it in the freezer, and then pull it out. And we'd go out into the pasture, open up the bag, and just start looking at the full ruminant stomach so you could identify all four parts of the rumen or of the uh, stomach of a beef animal or a sheep or a goat. Um, we've also, I also did uh, activities where we would have a, uh, beef cow reproductive tract and we could uh, get an AI gun out and practice AIing with a repro tract. Um, just really things that a hands-on activity might lead to more questions for those kids to ask and they might lead to those kids really bringing information in um, because at the end of the day we don't want to just sit and lecture to kids we want to actually get them involved and they kids will learn a lot more if they're being involved with it. Um, so I just always tell people, leave that up to your imagination, however you can find to get kids involved. I've also heard people say that maybe um, just lay out some ID cards or identification tools and just go send them through and maybe pull one kid to the side and give them all the answers. And then that starts a little bit of that debate of competitiveness of actually who's actually better for the day. Um, Another uh, easy way to maybe get uh, to learning some of this information for these kids is, or even if you're questioning, like maybe you have, aren't great with tools. Uh, I know veterinarians are incredible. At, they have, I know a lot of veterinarians have tools just everywhere. And I'm sure if you ask them uh, to maybe offer, bring some by or something just to kind of teach, I'm sure they would jump right at the opportunity. A lot of veterinarians would jump at the opportunity to bring some of those tools by 
and show kids how they're used um, and give them names for them. Um, let's see. Okay, and then within livestock, so that's your Skillathon and Quiz Bowl. That's kind of my thoughts with Skillathon and Quiz Bowl of how we can get kids involved uh, because once you get two or three kids where they have an awesome, great time at that practice, they might go to school and they might talk to some of their friends. And then the next time you might have them all bring a kid, another uh, one of their friends. And all of a sudden you start to grow and you start to have ki uh, all kinds of kids there wanting to learn. Um, so moving on to livestock judging, livestock judging is just a really hard one to teach uh, because there's, I always tell people it's, there's not a definitive answer every time. Um, Sometimes you just have to have knowledge to know what you're doing. Um, my, what I would tell you to do is, heck, if you have questions, you could contact me um, about it. Uh, maybe if asking if you want me to come work with some of your kids. Um, one of the things that my 4-H group actually did when I was younger was we would always put on a day camp, a three-day day camp for livestock judging where we would spend a day focused on each of your species and we just lump the sheep and goats into one. But um, we'd spend the morning, we go somewhere, we look at the livestock, we judge multiple classes. Um, while we discuss, the, while our coach discusses those classes with us, and then we'd go somewhere in the afternoon, we'd maybe grab a bite to eat or they'd bring us something to eat and then we'd uh, sit down and practice all afternoon, just working real hard at it. Um, that's something that we did and it was very beneficial because you got repetition going, um, giving one set five, six times, uh, to me really helps a kid because if you tell them to make a change in something and then just send them off to go give another set of reasons, that's not the same set that always, that doesn't transfer into that next set sometimes versus if you tell them to maybe change something little, and then you bring them back in giving that exact same set but they're supposed to be uh, making those tweaks that you give them, all of a sudden they start implementing those tweaks and they'll continue to carry on to their next sets that they work on. Um, there, uh, another thing, other things is just getting them out, take them to contests. Um, field days are great opportunities to get kids to go to contests, um, willing that they can get out of school and go. Um, maybe even trying to work with a local advisor uh, for a or local ag teacher at the school to see if they could work a deal out where they might help you uh, get those kids to be out of school or get an excused absence from school that day. Um, but getting those kids to those contests make huge differences because just getting to see the animals in person makes uh, big differences. I've always said there's only so much you can learn from looking at a computer screen. You've got to be able to go look at them in person. And I believe that, uh, every time I do it. <clears throat> um, and so those are my thoughts on the livestock judging portion. And then finally, I'll step into meats judging. Um, there are just all kinds of ways you can teach meats judging. Um, person I taught or I learned from may not have done it the most uh, enjoyable way for kids. Uh, he had umpteen thousand slides, I believe, like the old slide cartridges. Um, and he would just stick them up or put the projector up on the wall and we'd all sit around the table and we'd all go one at a time uh, identifying the cuts and uh, putting someone on the spot can be a little difficult but you learn um, it kind of makes you want to learn because when everyone else is going around the table and they're all getting them right and you're not getting any of them right you maybe learn a little bit from them um but I don't know if that's, I don't like that method anymore just because it gets boring, it gets old, kids kind of don't really want to do it anymore. So what I've really started to try to implement as we were preparing for sweepstakes this last year was we would um, just lay out a bunch of different, we had pictures of meat cuts and we'd lay them out on the table and uh, we'd do about 15 at a time and we'd send the kids in and have them fill out the Scantron with it. And then after they all, and we give them a time and then after they'd come back or they'd get done, we'd come back, we'd do an identification and we'd decide who did the best, um, trying to create a little bit of a competitive nature uh, within our group. So that way, because 
the thing I've always said I liked about livestock judging or really any of these events outside or most of these events was you don't have to like the person that you're on a team with, but uh, you hope that they do well just so that way your team can do well. But trying to beat them is not about is not a bad thing either, because if you have two kids that are just always trying to beat each other, they're going to start to score higher and do much better as they go forward in the future. Um, but the best thing I can always tell people, oh, wait, well, I'm going back into meets judging, which is um, trying to maybe create a little bit of competitive nature with them. Um, another fun thing to do is maybe ha uh, whoever wins for the day does the best uh, can select maybe a cut of meat that they want us to eat at the end of the year or something. Uh, we've kind of been playing with some of those ideas, trying to get some entice some kids to want to do well and uh, learn a lot. Um, oh, and then another fun activity is always go to uh, see if you can go to a local grocery store and or like a Dillon's or somewhere and see if you can go into the back and just go through the meat counter. Um, and there's all kinds of things to learn from there. Uh, you can learn all kinds of things from identification because, well, you can look at it, try to identify it. The name is right there in front of you. Uh, if you can't, um, other things such as maybe your quality grading for the day. So you've got all kinds of ribeye sitting in front of you. You can make all kinds of quality grade calls for the whole day and it's labeled and it's already taken care of. Uh, so those are some fun things to be able to do uh, within meets judging. But getting into the cooler and actually looking at the car uh, looking at the carcasses and the cuts of meat, I don't see that as beneficial as going to looking at live livestock just for the simple fact of, for one, it's a lot harder. I mean, I'm sure not everyone can get into a local meat locker and fit 13 kids inside that meat locker because um, they've got their things that they're trying to take care of and get done. Um, so it just become a big hassle. Um, some, but I do know that there are a lot of resources if you don't know much about livestock judging or meats judging sorry if you don't know a whole lot about meats judging some great resources are out there uh make sure when you're looking things up for meats it you that you put in 4-h meats judging um because there's been rule changes in the past and uh just things happen so make as long as you're following 4-h meats judging i know that there are some great resources out there uh I'm not going to name the colleges that have them because uh, I'm with Kansas State, but the, there are a couple other colleges that have really, really good resources to be used for meats judging. Um, I'm going to leave with my, or I'm going to finish up with a final statement, uh, which I always try to, I like this statement, and it is why. Um, when people talk to me about maybe learning about skillathon or quiz bowl i always tell them you know that you've got your kids hooked when they start asking the question why um why does something work the way it does or why is that that way well then you can get the opportunity to go more in depth and maybe they learn some new things from that and uh from there things just it things start to make sense you start to connect dots um at least that's the way it works in my brain a lot of times. The other thing is you've got to find your kid, the kids why. Why are they doing this? Why are they here? Are they here because mom and dad sent them and they mom and dad want to get out of the house for the night? Or are they there because they actually want to compete and they want to be uh, good at what they're doing? So just always find those. Uh, I just, the question why just always entices me with that. Um, so I'm going to leave it with that. I hope I didn't go, get too short tonight. Okay, thank you, Rhett. Um, what questions do you guys have? And we'll give you just a minute to, if you want to put them in the chat, you're welcome to unmute yourself as well and ask. Um, I see that we do have a comment about using your local farmers and ranchers for field trips. Uh, it makes for lots of good knowledge for the kids and um, lots of answers to the questions. Um, if you do have questions, if you've never been involved in any of the contests and you have 
other questions about what they entail and what that looks like, um, you can always check out youthlivestock.ksu.edu. And last year's sweepstakes rules are listed there, as well as the results for the sweepstakes. Let's see. Any other questions? And um, I don't know it, that Rhett touched on it, but sweepstakes happens in the in middle to end of August every year. And so uh, you have a little bit of time to work on that, but sweepstakes entries are always due August 1st. So you want to be on the lookout for that. You will need to reach out to your local extension agent um, to, to register your team because we do ask that only agents register the teams um, because of the way that we do the invoicing and the way that we collect information on that. So we want to make sure that once one person in your, in your extension office is entering those individuals. Okay. Looks like we don't have any questions tonight. So Rhett, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. If you have any questions, again, reach out to Rhett or myself. Um, my email address would have been who you received tonight's link from. The um, recordings for each of our sessions are listed on the Kansas 4-H Animal Science webinar page. And I will include that link when I send you all the recording of tonight's um, session as well. With that, we'll go ahead and sign off. And once again, thanks to Hold Rhett. Hold on, Kelsey. Yeah. I am putting my email address in the chat real quick. So if anybody needs my email. Perfect. We'll give you guys just a minute to uh, to write that down as well. Okay. Well, either I completely stumped them or I covered about everything that they wanted to know. <laughs> yes, yes. I we'll, we'll go with the we'll go with the latter. So <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. And thanks for joining us this evening, everyone. And we hope to see you in August in Manhattan.